please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Bracket. There goes the bell and we are starting about 0.2% in the green, 10,066, 67 on the Nifty and 32,640 on the Sensex, that's up 43, Sensex up a little less than the Nifty, Nifty now quarter percent higher, 10,070 as I speak, 71, uh, so that's a 27 point gain. Uh, the bank Nifty has done a little better, that's starting at about 24,900, 920 thereabouts. That's up about 0.3. Now the Nifty is gaining strength, uh, 10,075. The actually gainers are surprisingly even the metal. Stara Steel has put on about 0.7. Actually, nothing has gained more than a percent. And let me see if anything has fallen more than a percent. No. So everything is ranged at this point in time. Uh, Gale, okay, has moved to 1% higher. Uh, Oro. Uh, LNT, Tara Steel, Bosch, HPCL are among the stocks that are up about 0.8.9. Bajaj Finance as well, seeing some short covering, as is Bharti, Tech Mahindra, Reliance, Aisha Motors, all of them up about half a percent. Uh, no big uh, uh, movers here at all. There are about uh, eight or nine stocks that are mildly in the red. Bharti, Infratel, Sun, Pharma, Infosys, TCS, uh, Kotak Mahindra Bank, uh, uh, Power Grid and Ultratech Cement. That's all down all between 0.1 and 0.4 at best. So a very, very rangy market trying to find its feet uh, and now the Nifty climbs to 10,075. Yes, very rangy market for the mid caps as well. So just up about three tenths of a percent. The market breadth is good though. So after two days, the market breadth has actually opened up in the green with 920 stocks on the advancing side uh, at the moment. Uh, keep an eye out on that. In terms of losers, you have IRB Infra that's down almost about four odd percent on the back of news. Fortis Healthcare that's down almost about three odd percent or so. Uh, Biocon is just flat with a bit of a negative bias and uh, stocks like 63 moons etc. Uh, expectedly under pressure down almost about 16% uh, yeah 17% now uh, 63 moons but on the upside um, the list of gainers is not very impressive I mean you have something like a JP Associates that's up about one and a half percent Petronet LNG is picking up a little bit Bombay dying is up in the green up almost about three odd percent or so but otherwise it's a flat opening for the market the nifty just hanging on to that 10,060 mark that's a great opening for bears actually Sonia yeah. because you know, they would have got their gap up and uh, you know, uh, normally on these days, first cap up is sold in too, so it will be interesting to see. But uh, uh, Petronet LNG is looking interesting, United Breweries, uh, there's some short covering bounce in sale, but it will be interesting to see if that sustains or not. And of course, IRB down about 4%, Sun TV is also down about 1%. Uh, Ashwini, your thoughts on uh, the on the market? Uh, would you wait to take a shot, uh, more intraday rally before taking a shot, or is there a different trade now? See, it went into our slot, and as the uh, Nifty and the Bank Nifty cash was going up, the futures was coming down. Oh. So at the open, there is uh, clear shorting of the market. I think these rallies will peter out, and the same stocks uh, will start getting hammered again, the banks, the metals, etc. So uh, try to look for short plays on rallies. There's no value in uh, going long to play this rally, because uh, chances are that uh, as soon as a uh, bit of short covering is done, uh, it will start collapsing back. Uh, the global queues, etc., as we know, uh, we don't do much even when they are good. Mm. They are also now beginning to turn lukewarm. Yeah. So I think uh, pretty much a global correction uh, is kind of starting. And today will be a bit more sideways, so uh, I want to see whether yesterday's lows are broken. Mm. But overall, there's no question. Just go ahead and go short and you'll get something. Okay, actually, on the bank nifty futures, we are already at uh, on flat line. If, uh, I think the open was at 25,000. Uh, uh, so, uh, not you know, you're, you're, uh, of course, uh, level was 25,050, Ashpani. That hasn't come. But uh, right now, it's also a good time, you think? Well, the market need not always do what I say. <laughs> and 25,050 is an indication, mm. I think. The bank nifty high is about uh, 25,001 because it did not open with the kind of premium mm. that was there yesterday. And in fact, the bank nifty started getting sold into from the uh, first uh, uh, trade itself. So that way, you know, that 50 points uh, probably uh, got factored into the discount. Okay. Uh, well, uh, Sudarshan, has anything moved into your uh, radar in terms of a short sell intraday? Uh, there, no, no. I'm looking to buy the Nifty. I am sure. buying the Nifty. I'm not looking at going into the Nifty bank today. 
see if the markets are going to find some bottom it there will be a lot of choppiness markets won't give a v shaped rally and i'm prepared for that with wide stop losses bata and tech mahindra are both buying opportunities for the day okay and uh all right uh, just a quick word on any of the metal names names like hindalco etc and what you would do with them mitesh this question is to you so uh, you know hindustan zinc was a sell yesterday uh, that's the one which gave a fresh breakout and i think it's heading towards 270 so there's more downside left uh, hindalco we've been uh, bearish for some time now okay. uh, i think uh, it's hitting closer to support level 225 where i would want to take and close my short positions okay right. just just one stock that we want to give an eye on and that's uh, jet airways uh, uh you know uh, at the high point a bit of a breakout uh, ashwin any thoughts on that before we thank you for the moment see jet airways is a strong stock so any sort of uh, small correction that you get because of this market correction should be used to buy so i would think that uh, it's still uh, long positions can be held 630 is a nice stop at some point we'll cross 720 which was recent highs and probably head towards 850 Okay. okay gentlemen thank you very much for joining us uh, through the pre market and taking us through the first few minutes of trade we'll touch base with you around 10 and uh, with that uh, we continue with our 18th birthday celebrations and one of our long time friends and market masters ramesh damani is joining us now uh, ramesh thank you very much for joining us uh, it's very important for us that you are part of our birthday celebrations uh, uh, well uh, first up uh, the markets are uh, not in the greenest of shades as we celebrate our 18th birthday is that an opportunity to buy uh lata uh, and to the whole gang at cnbc first of all many many hearty congratulations on your 18th birthday i think as someone said the story of your channel is the history of modern business india so you've documented it covered it so meticulously so big congratulations to you and your team out there it's been a pleasure to be associated with this channel over so many years in fact i've grown up uh, with your channel so thank you so much for that opportunity uh in terms of uh, the market not being healthy uh, i take exception to that uh, lata because you know if you are a one of enophile the one who likes wine you know the best year was say 2000 2001 when the bordeaux collection was the be- at its best i think the market has still been extremely extremely uh, 2017 has been a vintage year for global equity markets across emerging markets across uh, emerged markets i mean you haven't had a better year than 2017 in a long long time mm. so if there's a bit of correction because of the end of the year profit taking or because of some nervousness i don't see any reason to panic about that Okay. okay, Ramesh. Hi. Good morning, and, and thank, thank you, you for that yeah. very generous praise. Uh, uh, try and live up to it. We will. Yeah, very sweet thoughts coming in from you. Uh, you know, uh, you've been uh, catching trends for so many years thank now. Thank you, Sonia. Um, what yeah. is your crystal ball telling you with respect to what 2018 could look like? Uh, Sonia, you weren't on the Diwali show, but I was sitting with Lata and Anuj on the Diwali show, and I mentioned the themes that uh, you know. and look to me good from a longish perspective not necessarily for a couple of quarters but over the next few years or maybe in the next 5 years i'd mention quick service restaurants because mm. i think that's a good example of how we play informal economy to formal economy uh, i think any technology changes will help that sector i've been very bullish on cybersecurity over the last year or so to be honest the stock hasn't performed but you start looking at the results that came out in quarter 2 you'll find companies in there that have uh, you know in a decent quarter after paying 30% tax produce 40% net margins so when growth comes into these sectors i think these stocks will get re-rated currently they're available at fairly cheap pe's so i think cyber security will be the other one uh, that i'm looking at some other themes you mentioned is property because the affordable housing <coughs> theme uh, of uh, the prime minister i think catches the eye that'll do well so those themes that we suggested in 2017 diwali probably will continue for the next few years and beyond ramesh good morning on diwali day you also told us that you you know of course are enjoying uh, you know as a grandfather now uh, ha, ha, mm-hmm. how's how's the last uh, four or five months been as a grandfather yes yes and any any uh, you know i think sonia will understand it i see a new <laughs> baby it's a miracle of life <laughs> and uh, we really enjoy it it's it's been a pleasure to have him at home and uh, You know, every day is you know you look forward to not the markets but just his musings also. Yeah, <laughs> you know, you also told us that uh, you know uh, it's a good time to st- start investing, of course, for your grandkid. Uh, you told us about a couple of themes. Uh, any 
any interesting uh, you know stock idea Ramesh that's uh, you know cropped up uh, in your mind over the last six months I mean if you want to review Yeah, Anuj, as you know, unfortunately, due to SEBI regulations, I can't uh, discuss individual stock sure. ideas. But we had suggested, you know, QSR, services industries, food packaging, mm. cybersecurity. And I tend to remain bullish on all of this. I think the question uh, investors need to ask themselves, there is some nervousness on the street. It may be due to Gujarat election results due in uh, mid-December. It may be due to year-end profit taking. But there is some nervousness. But here's the question you ask yourself. Do you feel that we are at a bull market top? In which case, of course, you need to be selling and raising cash. But if you feel it's a correction, I think you know people who have sold the corrections have lived to regret it. Mm -hmm. I think what has happened is that the first time global markets are firing on all. You know, this global economic growth has come back in the world, and you'll have China, U.S., <coughs> and Japan at different stages. While the U.S. might uh, be at the point of raising interest rates, I think in Europe and Japan and China interest rates are going to remain low for the next two, three years. So I think a good cocktail mix of uh, global economic activity, also in India, will you know, propel markets higher in 2018. You know, we always are cautious, but I have no reason to be scared that this bull market is ending, Lata. Okay. Uh, well, uh, uh, Ramesh, what about the smokestack sector? Well, I sh we shouldn't call IT smokestack. <laughs> it's not smoke. But uh, nevertheless, uh, do you think some of them have been able to reinvent themselves, as well PSU banks? You know, I think they have. I think, uh, the, you know, like I told you, there are sectors in the technology space, you mm. know, whether it's Aadhaar linked or whether it's, you know, Service Bureau linked or whether it's cybersecurity. They're producing phenomenal results. So mm. I think you kind of need to shift through the sands and see where the opportunity set lies. Uh, in terms of smokestack industries, I think uh, I have not been big, very bullish on banks, either public or private, for mm. a long period of time. But I would suggest that large, well-capitalized PSU banks should be looked at at this point, uh, including, I think, particularly the largest, because I think now with this uh, NCLT auction uh, going to happen in February and March, I think there's a serious possibility that some of it will be written back. Some of the auctions, the provisions that are already made will be written back. So there's a good chance that the market will rate the stocks fundamentally. And also, if you look technically, these are making 10, 12-year breakouts which tend to be very bullish for the stocks. So particularly among the very largest of the PSU banks, I would tend to put some money in there. Okay. Uh, you know, we were speaking with uh, Sunil Singhania yesterday, and he was telling us how there's so much money that has come into this market um, uh, through the mutual fund route, especially in the month of November. I mean, he was talking about figures like 24, 25,000 crores. Um, what's the sense you're getting about the local money now? Because at 32,000 on the Sensex, there's definitely some amount of jitters with respect to the domestic fraternity. Uh, do, you, do you still expect volumes of money to come in? It, it's, it might be slowing a little bit, but I expect it to continue, Sonia, because uh, domestic investors have discovered you know, a new bromance, if you will, with equity <laughs> markets. I think these things move the pendulum from one extreme to the other extreme. And I think uh, I'd be, and that will provide liquidity. I think finally they've discovered a good thing. Just remember, so let me just make the point I made repeatedly on your channel, is that if there's a, a basketball game, on, game going on, and people with five foot or people with seven footers are on opposite team, which would you bet on? I think obviously we would bet on the seven footers. <laughs> With equity investing, because long term capital gains are tax free, it's such a huge advantage that I think the Indian public is now realizing that rather than pay 30% tax on poor or mediocre returns, why not take the 25% we got last year and pay no taxes on that? I think that is just such a powerful theme uh, resonating through equity markets. And unless this changed in the budget, I think will continue to resonate. Okay, by the way, just want to keep an eye on global screen because a couple of markets like Shanghai, Kospi, even Taiwan, they've all moved to low point of the day right now. So, uh, Ramesh, the global picture has turned a bit murky, right? And we, we, we may want to blame our uh, current weakness on the Gujarat uncertainty, but we have performed in line with what the MSCI Emerging Market Index has done. Your thoughts on the, the global picture? I mean, we have performance. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, you know that you make a any year you take a twenty percent gain 
I'll take it because that's you know hugely powerful wealth creation. There is some thought that the U.S. market could be topping out because the kind of moves that say a Google or a Facebook or Amazon have had. Uh, but I don't see any euphoria yet there. I mean, bull markets speak out when there's huge <coughs> amount of euphoria and there's huge amount of debt leverage in the system <coughs> to buy shares and, you know, a lot of nonsense takes place. I don't see any of that right now in America. I mean, I've been circumspect on the American market from time to time. But, you know, it seems like economic growth is good. Corporate profits are at historical highs, so they won't go higher. But interest rates will remain. I mean, uh, let me take you back, Anuj, when we had this monetary stimulus package going on with the Fed. And everyone, including me, assumed that the minute the Fed withdrew the package, yeah. the markets and all asset classes would go in a tailspin. Yeah. Well, the Fed stopped <coughs> stimulating in 14 and started buying back, as a matter of fact. And yet, employment has increased, uh, earnings have increased, and, uh, you know, markets have increased. So, you know, there's reason to believe that the Fed maybe administered the right medicine this time, and the uh, markets have graduated to an era of low interest rate, benign economic activity, and, you know, th this will continue for the next few years. I mean, I don't see any reason to say, let's sell and get out. I mean, you mm. could have said that in 2010, 2012, 2014. I think the only uh, solid reason is this economic expansion in America has gone on since 2008. Mm. Ten years into a bull market, I mean, that's <coughs> pretty long legs. But I think you're probably seeing a record being made out there. Bitcoin is not the froth that might uh, bring in, uh, that might pull down, that might become a domino at some point. <coughs> I think I have no doubt it is. I mean, I just can't imagine the value. But put it in perspective, uh, Lata, Bitcoin, even at these very, very lofty valuations, the entire Bitcoin industry is worth $250, $225 billion, yeah, all right? That's right. Equity markets globally are worth maybe $45, $50 billion. So it's a drop in the bucket. I mean, the market corrects itself. All the sectors are correcting itself, whether it's pharma in India, tech in India, or globally, say, metals. They correct themselves and they kind of move on. So, okay. mm. you know, while Bitcoin is clearly an example of excess is going on in the marketplace, it's not enough to derail uh, valuations in equity markets. Or okay, well, uh, just before we let you go, uh, let me also personally congratulate you on becoming a grandfather. And since your grandson is going to be 18 one day and we are 18 today, <laughs> if you had to buy one stock for him now and, you know, keep it for his 18th birthday, which one would it be? Let me make it easier for you between, say, Reliance, l and Asian Paints, Maruti, what would you pick? <coughs> you know, I'd buy something in the quick service uh, place because <laughs> okay. I think... Uh, once you're going from informal to formal, urbanization, women working out of the home, and I think basic food consumption patterns aren't going to change the next decade or so. A lot of other industries will be threatened technologically. technologically. So I would look at particularly uh, in, uh, in, uh, in the restaurant dining type of concepts, uh, because I think this is a basic, the business is still nascent in India mm -hmm. and probably have a long runway. So if you ask me to put my money where my mouth is, I'd probably put it in that sector. Yeah, I was going to say you've given us food for thought. Thank you very much, uh, Ravi Tawani, for joining us today. It was a very special day for us, and you are our very special <laughs> guest. <laughs> <coughs> okay, that's uh, Ramesh Damani, a long-time friend of uh, CNBC TV 18. But now uh, we get back to talking business and talking interest rates and talking monetary policy. The Reserve Bank, of course, held fire left uh, uh, rates unchanged. But uh, another big takeaway from the press conference was uh, Governor Patel announcing faster recapitalization of public sector banks and saying that uh, the uh, recapitalization will be uh, wound up with reform uh, and uh, those that show performance will be given more capital. Uh, Dinabadu Mahopatra, the managing director and CEO of Bank of India, joins us now. Uh, good morning, Mr. Mahopatra. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, well, uh, the uh, announcement from the governor was that first banks uh, will have to go and raise their own capital and then uh, the, the performing ones will be rewarded by the government. Uh, what has been uh, your QIP plans? How successful are they? Uh, good morning, Lata <coughs> and the entire team. Before I proceed, let me wish you a happy sweet 18th birthday and... Happy 18th birthday. Thank you. I mean, Thank I mean, you very much, Mr. Mahapatra. So, and then move, moving on to the interest rate scenario and then our QIP and 
capitalization. Mm. You know, government has made it very clear mm. that uh, recap will be uh, mixed with reform, mm. and uh, recap will depend on your performance and potential. As far as performance is concerned, uh, you know, Bank of India in particular, for the last two quarters, doing extremely well in uh, NPA management, in uh, profitability, mm. uh, all key areas we are doing well. And potential-wise, Bank of India having the uh, pan-India presence and internationally present in 22 countries, you know, we are uh, poised for uh, whole, wholesale banking with international presence. So both ways will be benefited and one of the key advantages Bank of India is having today, the 65% of NPA is already covered by provisions. So that gives a good you know, leverage uh, to Bank of India. And some of the NCLT accounts where you know, uh, there is likely, likelihood of you know, resolutions. And in those accounts, some of the big accounts we have already covered 100%. If uh, resolution happens in month of January, February, uh, will Bank of India will get back, you know, write back huge amount of provisions that will benefit Bank of India. As far as you know, banking industry is concerned, definitely Reserve Bank of India made it very clear that uh, you know, this uh, capital will be front-loaded and that will help the entire banking industry. And uh, you know, if you see, growth is also starting to <laughs> raise its head, so all banks are showing better results. So going forward, I think next two quarters, banking industry will see a lot of upswing. So do you expect to see a, a better performance as far as asset quality is concerned, Mr. Mohapatra, from this 12% mark of gross uh, NPAs? Uh, can we see you do less than that next quarter? Uh, naturally, it, it is uh, moving in that direction. Uh, but if you take into account uh, you know, some of the developments in some of the banks, uh, based on the recent, in, recent initiatives of NCLT and the response to NCLT, uh, government, I mean, uh, there may be some review of some of the old assets, those who are uh, really, I mean, as a standard agent today, but uh, taking the benefit of NCLT and other things, regulator and other agencies, other banks may take a fresh look, mm -hmm. but that will be in the right directions, and that will definitely give a, a good comfort level to market, and banks can take a call and take a, I mean, take a view on capitalization as well. So that will be a positive for all banks. Okay. Uh, well, uh, what, pa I mean, what is the capital you need, Mr. Mahopatra? And actually, uh, as on today's uh, calculation is going on, uh, before the re recapitalization, you know, we, we, we requested government for 2,500 uh, crores from them and the rest we had planned to raise from our own market, mm. uh, from the market. Uh, but after recap uh, announcement, the, we have started uh, calculating again and we are discussing with the government that will be decided. And on our own, we are, we are planning to go to uh, the market for 3,000 crores QIP. Uh, board has already approved. So we are planning to uh, raise that from the market as well. Okay. Uh, you saw a decent growth in advances uh, in uh, the last quarter. How are you likely to end the year in terms of advances growth? <coughs> as, you, as, as you know, I always you know, mention this uh, in all forums. The top line growth per se may not be a good indicator. Within that top line, if rebalancing of asset and you no know, capital light asset you are building up, that will give you, I mean, good profit and good revenue. Uh, if you see, even if Bank of India has not grown the top line more or less same level, but our retail has grown around 16%, SME around 5-6%, agriculture around 5-6%. So growth is happening and we have reduced our corporate exposure from 52% to 48%. So rebalancing of entire asset and uh, 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 capital light asset buildup we have started. Going forward, since generally uh, on season starts from October, and uh, there is, uh, we, we see a little bit demand from the market. So I think next two quarters there will be some growth, uh, though it will be less than double digit growth, but there will be some growth next two quarter. But you did only 0.3% in the previous quarter, so you still think you can get yeah, to high yeah, single digits? Yeah. If, if, 
uh, if you see, you know, even the 0.3% growth in, you know, top line, but profit is uh, uh, improving and revenue is also improving, interest income also improving because of the rebalancing of the entire portfolio. That we have started from the very beginning, that, that has helped us to post better result. And going forward, uh, it, it will be uh, around 6-7% 7, 7 7 plus growth for the next two quarters, mm -hmm. I believe. Your second, uh, you know, the NCLT exposure first list is 8,000 crore and the second list is 6,600 crore. Have you provided for all, the, all of them 50%? No. No, no, Lata, first list is 8,300 crores, mm. but second list only 3,300 crores. 3,300? 3, 3, crores. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, provided fully? First list, uh, you know, uh, uh, first list, if you see, uh, no, bank as a whole, we have provided 65% of the entire NPF portfolio. Uh, first list, definitely, we are more than 55%. Uh, but some of the accounts, some of the big accounts, those who are on the verge of resolution, there we have provided 100%. Mm. So those uh, cases will be writing back the provisions. That is one of the biggest advantages for Bank of India. And second list also we have provided more than 50, 55 percent. Uh, depending upon the resolutions in first list, we will definitely get some traction in second list. Okay. Aircel and Relcom uh, are, are, are exposures for you and are they provided for? Oh, no, Aircel we don't have exposures <laughs> in that respect we are lucky. Uh, Aircom, of course, uh, no, uh, this is coming. Uh, Aircel don't have any uh, exposure. Okay. But the other account, we have some exposure, but uh, things are going on. We okay. are confident that you know, it will be resolved uh, as per the I mean, uh, expectation. All right. Okay, Mr. Mahopatra, thank you very much for joining us uh, with your details this morning. The market has actually picked up a bit yes. now, so almost half a percent higher. Uh, is that a, a fresh call to sell, perhaps, for traders? Uh, no, I, I don't know, so, uh, Sonia, because, you know, the open... Uh, equal high has been taken out so mm -hmm. uh, i don't know we not uh, cross yesterday's high yet yesterday's high on the nifty of course was 10104 so as of now uh, uh, that would be i think the the point of call up, uh, above which i think there could be uh, an interesting activity so just about 10 points left so that's crucial but i think uh, this uh, initial shots i think uh, they have been forced to cover uh, mm -hmm. i don't know whether uh, you know fresh shots come but you know there's a couple of stocks which are leading the market higher sbi for example we were discussing this in the morning i think that stock has moved to high point and that has had a bit of an impact on the on the bank nifty so that i think is quite interesting okay.